Good evening, Stevens Point. I'm Anjan Redinger. And I'm Rachel Ellis. This week on SPTV News, the 45th President of the United States has been elected. We've got the scoop on students' opinions regarding this election, and the 48-hour film challenge is fast approaching. All of this and more when we return. Politicians on the left and the right are reacting to Donald Trump's stunning victory against Hillary Clinton. As speculation begins about who Trump will enlist for his administration, Jason Carroll reports. Tonight, Donald Trump is embracing a new reality as the next president of the United States. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. She congratulated us, it's about us, on our victory. And I congratulated her and her family on a very, very hard-fought campaign. And we owe her a major debt of gratitude for her service to our country. The president-elect pulling off a stunning victory, capturing the key battleground states of Florida, North Carolina, and Ohio, and blasting through Hillary Clinton's blue wall in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, which put him over the top. As I've said from the beginning, ours was not a campaign, but rather an incredible and great movement made up of millions of hardworking men and women who love their country and want a better, brighter future for themselves and for their family. It's a movement comprised of Americans from all races, religions, backgrounds, and beliefs who want and expect our government to serve the people and serve the people it will. Trump, the first non-politician to assume the presidency since Dwight Eisenhower, now shifts his focus to the transition to the White House and building a Trump administration. Current RNC chairman Reince Priebus, one potential option for Trump's chief of staff. I haven't thought about it. And right now I'm chairman of the party. I'm excited about that job. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie also mentioned as a possibility for the chief of staff role with potential cabinet selections including former House Speaker Newt Gingrich, Senator Bob Corker, Senator Jeff Sessions, and former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Starting today, Trump will be offered the daily classified briefings, getting the same high-level intelligence as President Obama, who will welcome Trump to the White House tomorrow. We all want, want what's best for this country. That's what I heard in Mr. Trump's remarks last night. That's what I heard when I spoke to him uh, directly, and I was heartened by that. That's what the country needs. Once Trump takes office in January, he'll have Republican majorities in both houses of Congress to help push through his agenda. I think what Donald Trump just pulled off is an enormous political feat. It's an enormous feat in that he heard those voices that were out there that other people weren't hearing, and he just earned a mandate, and we now just have that unified Republican government. Despite his overwhelming electoral college win, Trump still faces the challenge of bringing together a nation bitterly divided by a hard-fought campaign. Now it's time for America to bind the wounds of division. We have to get together. To all Republicans and Democrats and independents across this nation, I say it is time for us to come together as one united people. As mentioned, Trump and Obama will meet Thursday at the White House. The president said that the White House will cooperate with the incoming administration, citing the example President George W. Bush set in 2008. UWSP Student Affairs is providing the opportunity for students to learn more about equality and diversity. This discussion will focus on how students can make UWSP a safe and welcoming environment for all students and visitors, no matter their race, gender, faith, and sexuality. Student Affairs hopes that they can create a constructive discussion that could possibly provide solutions on how to achieve this goal. This diversity discussion will take place on Monday, November 14th from 6 to 8 p.m. in the DUC Theater. 
The UWSP Filmmakers Club is getting ready for their 48-hour film challenge this weekend, where students can get together to compete and make short movies. SPTV took a closer look. The UWSP Filmmakers Club is getting ready for the 48-hour film challenge this weekend. Students have specific guidelines for what they include in the film, but can really go in any direction they choose. It's kind of an exhausting experience, but it's really fun. It's a really great way to, to bring people together. It's really fun, I guess, because there's, there's so much pressure involved in it. Um, it's stressful, yeah, but, but then at the end you're like, wow, I did this, I survived a whole weekend and I made it. Sunday we have our, uh, our screening slash closing ceremonies where we'll watch what everyone has made and we have these things called the golden barbs. Golden barbs, so they're, 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 they're barbies that are spray painted gold. And we hand those out, they're like our Oscars. Communication professors will be judging entries and providing students with some helpful feedback. It's cool to get like their feedback from like a professional point of view rather than just students. So you get to see what other students are doing. You get to be like, hey, that's cool. Maybe I'll do that next time. Or, oh, I didn't, I didn't think of that. Filmmakers Club regularly works on projects of this sort, allowing students to explore media and filming in a fun and casual way. What our, our goal is on campus is to try to get people together to make, make films and just essentially have fun. Right now, actually, we're in the middle of filming a short like horror type film. So that's something that we will sit down at the meetings, we'll go through, we will bring out, we'll bring out ideas for things that people want to film, and then we'll go through, we'll write out a script, we'll pick out scenes, and then we'll pick a date to shoot, we'll go and shoot, and then we'll edit. It's more of a creative outlet for those who want to be involved in film. It's all, like I said, it's all student run. So it's, it's just a bunch of students who love, who love media, who love filming and making, making content. I would just invite anyone that wants to show up to show up. That's kind of how we've always done it. We encourage anyone to be there. And even if you don't like media, you might just want to show up and hang out and be like, oh, I'm making a movie right now with some friends. For SPTV News, I'm Anjan Redinger. Interested in competing in the challenge or learning more about Filmmakers Club, contact the president, Noble Runman. Next month, SIEO will be sponsoring a blood drive for UWSP students to donate at. Evan Peterson has more. Anyone looking for an opportunity to help out the community is in luck because one of SIEO's blood drives is drawing close. SIEO sponsors four blood drives throughout the year. There are two each semester, with the first being held with the Blood Center of Wisconsin and the second one, this one, being held with the American Red Cross. So to donate blood, it's really helpful if you bring your student ID so we can swipe you in, or if you know your student ID number so we can type it into SPIN. And then you also need a driver's license or a passport, something that has your birth date on it so you can register to donate blood. And then it's also really helpful if you drink a lot of water before you come to donate blood. You'll be able to donate blood simply by walking into the blood drive, but SIEO does encourage you to make an appointment to donate online at the SIEO website under the Volunteerism tab. They're usually on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, so our December blood drive is on December 6th and 7th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. both days in the DUC Laird Room. If there are any students who wish to help out at the blood drive but are unable to donate themselves, you can sign up to be a volunteer at the blood drive online at the SIEO website. For SPTV, I'm Evan Peterson. To learn more about the upcoming blood drive as it draws closer, check out the SIEO on the UWSP website or on SPIN. The university store is celebrating our veterans and asking the students and faculty to join them. They are asking for all pointers to come down and sign a banner to thank our veterans for their hard work and service to our nation. To honor these veterans, the university store has started an 11% off sale on all regularly priced UWSP apparel and gifts. The banner will be available until Friday, November 18th, and the sale takes place on Friday, November 11th. SGA is hosting an event called Table Talk for Unity to explore and discuss diversity issues. The community, UWSP staff, and students are invited to discuss racial injustices, personal concerns, and possible solutions to these problems. SGA hopes this event will help the community move towards a safer and more diverse environment. This event will take place on November 17th in the GEC Alumni Room and snacks will be provided. In a world that has so much negativity, it only takes one act of kindness to make a difference. The father-daughter duo of Larry and Anna Last have opened up an alcohol-free space for young adults to come to and have a good time. 
Limitless, located in West Bend, Wisconsin, is a music and arts venue that features art from local patron and substance recovery centers. The venue is a safe space for those who want to have a dance and have a good time without the use of alcohol or other substances. According to Anna, Limitless is a place of love and light. It is open for anyone who wants to dance, be carefree, and sober. Do you enjoy writing? If so, University Writers Club might be the club for you. Caroline Gilchrist and Nicole Sider have more information. University Writers is an organization on campus that allows students to share their passion for writing, reading, and publishing. They meet every week to explore and create different types of writing. Every week we get together and we do writing prompts, usually just to exercise skills and creativity. Um, they can be picture prompts, word prompts. Um, sometimes we have little cards that we hand out and then people make a story out of that or a poem out of that. The organization has also printed Barney Street every year since 1978, which is a student literary publication. And Barney Street is the publication we set out every year. It's an anthology of student works. It has po prose, poetry, um, and art, student artwork. Um, and it's all combined, and we are the ones that edit it. We're the ones that distribute it. Everyone has the opportunity to submit their work between now and December 16th. If you are interested in submitting your work to Barney Street, email barneyst at uwsp.edu. Barney Street doesn't come out until uh, about mid-spring, usually April. We do have some of our older, all of our older copies since we're one of the oldest organizations on campus. Previous editions of Barney Street are available for checkout in the campus library. For SBTV News, I'm Caroline Gilchrist. If you are interested in joining University Writers, they meet at 7 on Monday night in room 231 of the CCC. UWSP is offering many opportunities this summer for students to study abroad. The Office of International Education is holding information sessions to give students the opportunity to learn more about programs offered. Some programs include art and design in Ireland and Scotland, history and culture in Thailand, and European Union Tour, which is music in Europe and theater in London. Sessions have taken place throughout the past week, but if you are still interested in these opportunities, you can contact the Office of International Education and check their website for more information. The Carlson Arts Gallery Student Advisory Committee is hosting a public art symposium for student work. The symposium has a grant for up to $6,000 each year to promote public art. The projects are limited by time and financial means. Many past grant winners have art displayed throughout campus and have gained great careers as artists. Completed proposal packets and contracts are due back in the Art and Design Office or by email by Tuesday, November 22nd. PowerPoint presentations demonstrating students' qualifications and ability to complete their proposed projects will be given in the NFAC Room 164 on Thursday, December 8th. That is all the news we have for you this evening. We will be right back with sports after the break. <clears throat> Hello? Two days. Two days? <clears throat> hey, it's me. Two days. Two days? Two days. Orzala, the seventh largest book printer in North America, is hiring students for the semester. We are 100% employee owned and located right here in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. All shifts currently hiring with jobs starting at $10.80 an hour. Hours are flexible. For more information, contact the Orzala HR department.
sports this week, the Pointer football team won their last home game of the season on Saturday, being UW Stout. Kyle Larson led the Pointer's offense once again. He was 29 of 45 with 456 yards and four touchdowns. Larson, Logan Taylor, and Jared Pankow accounted for all of the Pointer's touchdowns as the seniors went out on top. Logan Taylor had a career day with 169 yards and three touchdowns. Pankow had eight receptions for 140 yards and one touchdown. The Pointers finish up their season this Saturday on the road against UW River Falls. Kickoff is at 2 p.m. The men's hockey team was in Minnesota over the weekend and came away with a win and a tie. The Pointers tied Gustavus Adolphus on Friday with a score of 3-3. The Pointers then beat Bethel University on Saturday by a score of 5-3. Jacob Barber had two goals in the win against Bethel. The hockey team returns home this weekend for games against Concordia College and St. John's University. The women's team hockey team was also in Minnesota over the weekend. On Friday, they lost to Concordia Moorhead by a score of 3-1. The Pointers then tied their Saturday game against them by a score of 3-3. The Pointers got two goals from Ali Baghini. The hockey team also beat Gustavus Adolphus on Tuesday 3-2. Scoring for the Pointers were Lauren Smith and Ali Baghini, who had two goals. The Pointers play their first home game of the season Friday against Conferenceville UW River Falls with puck drop at 7.30. The Pointers volleyball team lost in the semifinals of the WIAC tournament to eventual champion UW Whitewater, three sets to two. Bree Pippenbrook was named WIAC Defensive Player of the Year. Pippenbrook, along with Kelly Seflu, were named to the all WIAC team. Ellen Drury was named to the all WIAC Honorable Luncheon Team and Delaney McCary was named to the all Sportsmanship Team. The Packers lost to the Indianapolis Colts by a score of 31 to 26. Aaron Rodgers was 26 of 43 for 297 yards and three touchdowns and one interception. Jordy Nelson led the Packer receivers with seven receptions for 94 yards and one touchdown. The Packers begin their three-game road trip this Sunday when they take on the Tennessee Titans. The Wisconsin Badgers beat Northwestern on Saturday by a score of 21-7. For the Badgers, it was their first win in Evanston since 1999. The Badgers' offense was led by Corey Clement, who had 32 carries for 106 yards and one touchdown. Bart Houston was 2-3 of three for 51 yards passing, and Alex Hornbrook was 11-19 for 92 yards. The Badgers return home to Camp Randall this weekend as they take on Illinois with kickoff set for 2.30. UW assistant volleyball coach Lindsey Koo has just finished her second season with the Pointers. Prior to becoming assistant volleyball coach at UWSP, she was the varsity girls assistant volleyball coach at Rochelle Township High School. We learn more about her in this week's edition of Getting to Know You. The love of the game when I was young, um, just playing in middle school, playing in PE class, I had some really great younger uh, coaches in my younger days and they really um, shared their passion for volleyball and that's what grew for me. Um, I have a huge background, my family, a lot of my family members are coaches, um, so when I was younger just watching them coach um, and sharing their passion with their athletes made me want to do the same thing. I don't think I have a coaching role model, I guess. Well, my dad is a coach, so I guess I guess I can relate to my dad um, in being understanding and thinking of the person first rather than the athlete first. Um, my dad does a good job of really caring for his student athletes and making sure um, that we're treating the player and the athlete separately. To be honest, as a coach, um, getting this position um, because I called Abby or Abby called me two summers ago and I did not think I would get this job um, because they've been so successful and I was out of the coaching um, industry I guess you could say college coaching industry for two years so I just it was a huge transition for me um, so I'd say that's a huge success for me personally hope to have shared my passion for the love of the game with other players and hopefully that they had a good experience with me being their assistant coach um, 
and learning the intangibles like being trustworthy, being a leader, being a captain, um, working hard, all those intangibles, I would hope that they could learn those from me. If you have any coaches or players that you would like to nominate, please email us at sptv at uwsp.edu. That's all the sports stories we have for you tonight. Up next is entertainment news with Mimi Mitrovic. I'm Joy Hipsch, SPTV Sports. Stand by camera one. Coming in on camera in five, four, three, two, one. Take camera one. SPTV News serves Stevens Point, the largest city in Portage County and home to 26,000 people. SPTV News covers campus local and national news as well as local sports and entertainment. Melissa Mitrovic will present you the latest in Point News. Tune in to Charter Channel 983 or visit our YouTube channel. SPTV News, pointing to you. Welcome back. If you like spooky stories or superstitions, the Hmong and Southeast Asian American Club, or HESAC, is hosting an event you may be interested in. Evan Peterson has the story. Halloween may be over, but we can still enjoy hearing about some scary stories. This weekend, HESAC will be hosting an event called Trance into the Unknown, which will take a look at spooky stories and superstitions coming from Hmong culture. So it's kind of like... Um there's going to be a lot of different things. It's going to be educational and it's going to be fun. So we, we have um, usually we have like a keynote speaker come in and then he talk, he gives like a presentation about um, something that's related to our theme. Our theme are, is um, superstitions and horror within uh, the Hmong culture. So um, it's just going to include like various aspects of that. This will be the 16th annual edition of Hasiak's themed evenings, which is the largest event the organization puts on during the school year. Hasiak chose to make this year's event based on horror and superstitions in Hmong culture because it was a topic that not many people know about, and they thought it would be interesting to explore this topic. Our event, Taste of the Dome, um, is this Saturday, November 12th. It starts, the door opens at 4. Um, our program begins at 5 and free entertainment starts at 6.30. It's going to be held in DeFree's layer room. Admission will cost $10 to students with your UWSP ID and will cost $15 for general admission to the door and $12 for general admission in advance. You can purchase your tickets at the Information and Tickets Office in the DUC or at the event itself. For SPTV, I'm Evan Peterson. Hasiak on UWSP's website or SPIN to learn more about the trance into the unknown and other upcoming events. Looking for a stress reliever? Take a break from studying by traveling into the future and follow Kanu Reeves as he discovers what it means to be a part of the Matrix. On Tuesday, November 15th, the Comparative Religion Club is putting on a special showing of the Matrix in the DUC Theater. And after the movie, there will be a panel to discuss the religious influences that are seen throughout the film. This film is free to attend and will take place from 6 to 9 p.m. This upcoming week, UWSP will host to a musical event on Thursday, November 17th. Professor Stephen Bajella will be performing with colleagues Molly Roseman, Lawrence Levington, and David Hastings to present a recital with all the proceeds going towards UWSP musical scholarships. There will be numerous instruments performed, including the violin, piano, saxophone, and cello. They'll come together in harmony to present four pieces. Other concerts next week include a composer's concert and the music department's percussion ensemble concert. You can visit the UWSP Department of Music's Facebook page for more information regarding times and prices of the concert. UWSP celebrates the success of students every day through showcases, presentations, and other displays of students' work. Over the course of this next week, the College of Professional Studies will begin displaying work from Department of Art and Design as well as the Division of Interior Architecture. Students and the public are welcome and encouraged to attend and see the hard work that students are doing every day. The foundation begins on November 14th and goes on until November 28th. Admission to the gallery is free. That's all the entertainment news we have for you tonight. Now over to the Pointer Politics with Nicole Pfeiffer. Thanks, Mimi. The results for this year's presidential election have been revealed. SPTV has students' response to the results and their hopes for the new president. 
Ji Song Kim has more. Yes, I have voted. I voted for the 2016 presidential election. Students at UWSP have different opinions on this year's presidential election. They are still discussing the division that remains in the country after the election. Actually, there's never been more opposite candidates in history to run against each other. And I think it's really divided and it's just caused a lot of tension between people. Many people were taken back by the unexpected results of the election. The election was not predictable. I think a lot of people uh, didn't expect this to happen this way. Uh, it was very interesting. Some states that have always been blue turned red. Uh, some states that sometimes can be swing states were blue. The election results took a long time to be settled. It was a lot of excitement. I think a lot of people stayed up for the whole night. I mean, even when I went to bed at 1 a.m., they still did not know at that time. Students also had different views about voting. I think if they don't vote, they can't complain. Every vote truly does matter. It makes me so, so happy how many people this year did vote. Um, it makes me really proud of America, proud of its citizens for exercising their right to vote. Especially people who aren't even interested in politics or don't follow politics. I'd rather them just not vote because that can really change the votes. However the results are, they hope for a better future with the new president. I hope that they keep America's best interests at heart. I hope that everyone feels safe in America. It seems like the debate on whether students agree to the new president's policies will be going on for a while. I think people should really start looking into policies more than characteristics. For SBTV, I'm Ji Sung Kim. If you are interested in politics, contact the UWSP's Democratic and Republican student organizations. On Tuesday, November 8th, the nation went to the polls and decided who was going to be President Obama's successor. In an unexpected turn of events, Donald Trump was elected to become President of the United States. Trump won by a slim margin of 290 electoral votes to Hillary Clinton's 232. However, Clinton won the popular vote with a little more than 200,000 votes. Clinton is not the first to win the popular vote, but lose the electoral college vote. Others, such as Al Gore, Andrew Jackson, Grover Cleveland, and Sandal Tingen are among others who have won the popular vote but lost the election. This historic election has caused tension to spread within the United States, which will transfer over to the inauguration in January. Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Arizona were among the last states to count their electoral votes. These states had a large hand in swaying the election. The results for this, these states tipped the scale in Donald Trump's favor, causing him to gain the last crucial electoral votes needed to beat Clinton. Wisconsin has 10 electoral votes to give, and for the first time since the election of Ronald Reagan in 1984, Wisconsin has voted Republican. The House of Representatives and the Senate are also Republican controlled, as well with newly elected Senator Ron Johnson in the mix. Wisconsin has Republican leadership that will determine the course of future events. After the unexpected turn of the presidential election, protesters take to the streets to express their emotions on the results. Trump buildings have been targeted in Chicago and New York City, and marches have taken place in many major cities across the United States. Some protesters have taken the chant of not my president, not today, while others accept the election but want their voices to be heard by the new president-elect. Many of these protesters claim to fear for the future, but for the most part have kept th these protests peaceful with little violence breaking out. In his acceptance speech, Donald Trump expressed his hope that America can unite as a one country and as one people. With this election being so unprecedented, no one is certain of what will happen next. That is all that we have for you this week in Pointer Politics. We will be right back after the commercial break. Don't have a television? Don't worry. SPTV is available on demand at uwsp.edu slash sptv. Find your favorite shows on our website, plus links to all of our YouTube content. Stay up to date with SBTV news that includes information about campus and community happenings. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, we're SBTV-UWSP Television. SBTV, let's make media together.
have for you this week in SVTV. Make sure to keep yourself updated on all of SVTV's social media pages. Until next time, Stevens Point, have a great night.